obvious when I'm reading, but the poems tend to be a little on the darker side. But, I, you know, I'm not that dark or negative of a person. I just get it out of my system, and my poems and art is the way it goes. So we're starting with Blower Up. More than just outdated blow-up dolls, their wigs drip off the rigging and coalesce with your own true desires. They can be curvy, they can have curvature of the spine, they can be bloody red velvet, angel food cake, white, brown, black, one of each, threesome bound, twisted, identical twins with enormous breasts, plump or smooth toned thighs constructed from the latest high grade rubber, feels better than real flesh. It doesn't smell synthetic even when it burns. You get to choose your own firecracker, hair color, eye color, butt size, nipple shape, and the sounds they make when their mouth is open, or stuffed, or gagged, or banged into misshapen oblivion. We have a special room for the best-selling, blood-drenched, screaming ones, with no eyes and two extra holes. Whoa. I think I saw that. <laughs> Disposal. In one dream scene, it was a bag full of rye bread. In the next dream scene, it was a bag full of rye dick. A big dildo in a bread bag, or a real dick in a doggy bag, ready to be shoved <laughs> into the trash compactor. He stuck his dick in when she told him not to, but after that happened, why did she marry him? Whose fault is it if I get raped in my dreams, and then when I'm awake, I destroy men and don't even realize what I'm doing or why my mind is diverging them into torn and broken rubble stuffed in one sandwich bag after another? It's not like they're all just pieces of meat, and it's not like we're nothing but holes, but in one dream scene, I stand up for myself, and tell a guy to shut his mouth, and the next thing I know, there's a dick in every one of my holes to show me what my mouth is good for. Go ahead and try to speak for yourself now, he growls into me. You can vomit or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, your fault. What do you think might happen with a man who doesn't feel like he has enough control over his own life? He takes control of the woman in his life. He grows increasingly drunk and angry. He screams at the TV and sticks up for Hitler. He yells at your 20-pound dog. You carry the shaking pup upstairs and let the man keep screaming out hostility. At least he's not screaming at you. You go back down to get some water or to fix yourself, another vodka and coke, tone your nerves and convince yourself this is all normal. It isn't. It's all your fault. He comes into the kitchen and glares at you, raises his hand above your head like he's threatening to punch you in the face. He punches the kitchen cupboard above your head, breaks another hole. He acts like it was just another joke. You try to convince yourself it was because he was drunk, but you were drunk too. When you drink, you don't scream at other people and punch things and then claim you were joking. You don't forget what you did the next day. When you tell him what he did, he apologizes, but laughs and does it again. He thinks it's everyone else's fault, or at least it's not his own. It must be yours again. He doesn't care if your dog is having panic attacks. The dog must be haunted, or else the dog has collapsed into a seizure to show you a part of your future. Mm -hmm. So this one starts with a seizure too, and it's called contorted impregnation. An unexpected seizure crashed me into the fire pit, burned my face into ember grotesque, screamed the blazing light. You want to keep thinking you're not so hot? Now you are. For a long time, my gaze was swallowed down under the glaze vat. 
overpainted and hidden until the bloated Ophelia bulbed out from between my thighs, brewed a conjoined nuthatch. Faces writhing like strobe lights, gleaming red bird twins, dangling pools of blood, pole dancing three ways with three legs in jam jar shape. Ripped out eye holes spew the laughing gas. Mm -hmm. So it was, so for some reason I want to say on a lighter note, but this isn't necessarily on a, on a lighter note, but it's on a, a different note. Um, I was, like, I think it was way back when I was in high school when the original Twin Peaks season ended, and I was a huge fan of Twin Peaks, so the fact that they're reviving it this month, um, I brought to life this old chat book I published called The Laura Poems mm -hmm. that are all inspired by Laura, Laura Palmer from Twin Peaks. And um, like I have it in my little, um, my little uh, poetry shop for this month only and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have a few with me and that kind of thing. So I thought I'd read one out of there, a shorter one. And each of the poems in here starts with a little quote from The Secret Diaries of Laura Palmer. And this one starts with a quote from the giant, the owls are not what they seem. And the poem is called Owl Light. Oh, how it swoops in her mind, a blind fling into the wrought iron spires. She sometimes thinks she'd rather be impaled instead of this waiting on tenter hooks, instead of this wondering who, who, who. She knows it's a raptor. She knows it doesn't have bright feathers for her to clutch onto. It's not that kind of bird. It flies by night. It flies by street lamp light, reflected off the zippers of smiling body bags. She can't unzip her own skin, and the cruel talons have already dug into the back of her neck. At least when seized as prey, she'll get to fly for a few minutes. At least she can imagine being dropped, falling, 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 in love with the dark spikes. Mm. I'm just going to set this down. All right. Love can be a choke cherry. It starts with a multicolored glitter dress lifted up high to show thighs wrapped with garter belts made out of garter snakes. She knows they're not poisonous, but she finds out they're not really big enough for her own magnetized thighs unless she sits still in one place forever. It's a cold place, especially at night. She knows another nightmare is coming when the bird sounds turn into dark moans, mounds of wings torn, ripped, pitched, until she wonders, when did wings even exist? None of this is real, so why give birth to more? Somebody will see the shells, but not the birds, tiny fetuses stuck on concrete, dripping beaks, ants crawling in and out of the cracked neck. Now they deserve to be hung from a tree like rotten choke cherries, like broken ornaments that will fall down hard, finally trash themselves into oblivion, then be flung into the cesspool. It starts with a kiss that turns into a rotten apple chokehold, being smothered into nothing, a bitten into spit out core. Blue marriage. What made me think there was only one color of endless blue? Sweet blue fruit congealed into a blue, blue blood bath, colder and colder. How do frozen blood clots sing? Maybe from the radio inside, a car in the middle of a blue demolition derby until it crashes and dissolves. Is it dissolution? or poisoned discord if I keep trying to extract myself from cracked handles, screeching inside my head, but I'm trapped in a bad dream 
and the words won't emerge in real life. A stuck tongue keeps breaking the mirror, and kookaburra sits in the old gum tree between frigid blue branches with no more leaves until the broken holes turn into a cruel chupacabra, something that might not really exist. Maybe my song never did, but I can still hear it, soundlessly groaning, dripping down into discolored blue. Love is the color of dead blue skin silently screaming. Four more, so thanks for listening to me, everyone. This one's called Everyone Handles Death Differently. Even if I can't save myself, I still photograph the dead birds and save their remnants, and save their remains. Dead remnants infiltrate the memory box. I meant it when I said it. Maybe he did not. Otherwise, how could I have been so easy to replace? Every dead bird is different. Different size, different shape, different structure, different missing parts, different little dead hearts, different causes of their demise. I replaced brains with hearts, then wanted to rip my heart out, then thought about pouring another heavy dose of sweet cream into the latest small bird coffin. Everyone handles lost love differently. I think dead birds will always love me more than living humans ever really will from here on out. Ghosts <laughs> of her cards. Sometimes I feel like I barely exist. I could easily be replaced with her, or her, or her, or her. You'll get tired of listening to me, and so you'll try a more quiet her. You'll get tired of handling me, and so you'll dive into her body. Maybe so-called love is just a game filled with lots of different hers with an alternating playing field of card tricks. I'm not her anymore. My cards are lost. Part of my brain suspects they were purposely torn into pieces and then flung down through the cracks of a broken deck. Mm -hmm. So my last two I'm going to read are a little different. They're um, these newer ones I'm writing that are all entitled When I Used to Be a Little Girl. And they, part of them derive from actual childhood memories fused into more, I guess, dreamlike things. So I'm just going to read two of those. I think I have four so far. So we'll see what happens with those. When I Used to Be a Little Girl. Fig Newtons remind me of dead grandpas because they killed mine. Hmm. Actually, it was a heart attack, but I didn't understand that as a little girl. And I didn't understand why he liked Big Newtons or overly milky oatmeal. He loved them both more than he loved my grandma. <laughs> I never loved the idea of marriage, the woman in the kitchen, the man yelling at the TV until his teeth fell out. <laughs> Dentures dangling out of his mouth. He thought it was so funny to shove another Big Newton in front of my face and tell me to eat it. Mm. <laughs> All right, my last one when I used to be a little girl. My sisters and I picked bunches of the dead off the ground and formed a mound, then carried one of the cats in front of the Cicada Mountain and watched the cat eat our offering. At least the insects were already dead, and we were children who later grew up <laughs> became our own individual living creatures. We were not adults with show-off child brat brains. We were not adults who wanted to be in charge of everyone else, even though we didn't really care about anyone else. We did not want a leader who would tilt nests upside down, watch the baby birds fall out, and call himself the boss as they died. Thank you.